step is conversion of prothrombin to thrombin the second step is conversion of prothrombin to thrombin prothrombin it is a protein produced from liver it is inactive it should be converted into active thrombin form and for this to happen prothrombin activator is required and this also requires presence of calcium ions in first step we already saw prothrombin activator is formed by both extrinsic as well as intrinsic pathways in the second step that prothrombin activator in presence of calcium ions will convert the inactive prothrombin to active thrombin the final step is conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin now fibrin fibrinogen it is inactive this is the last step last step includes the formation of fibrin mesh but the fibrin itself is inactive it is in the form of fibrinogen this thrombin comes and activates that fibrinogen once it is activated you can see fibrin monomers are formed inactive fibrinogen converted into active fibrinogen also called as fibrin monomers this is a hexamer four polypeptides are removed and it becomes fibrin monomers the fibrin monomers will undergo polymerization and forms loose fibrin threads the monomers will undergo polymerization and forms loose fibrin threads so they are still loose like that now on this loose fibrin threads factor number 13 is working and calcium ions in presence of calcium ions and factor number 13 factor number 13 is fibrin stabilizing factor so loose threads will become dense fibrin threads fibrin mesh work is formed so this loose thing will gradually become strong and a mesh work is formed so a final a final fibrin mesh is formed but still in between you can still find gaps the gaps are filled with cells various types of cells red blood cells blood platelets white blood cells they they come and fill that gaps and this itself is is the blood clot so fibrin mesh itself is the blood clot blood clot is also called scab or thrombus it is called scab or thrombus so third step is conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin fibrinogen is inactive fibrin is active so that conversion is possible by this thrombin thrombin converts that fibrinogen to active fibrin or also called fibrin monomers they are, they are monomers like that so they will undergo polymerization they combine together polymerization it will combine to form threads like that so they are loosely packed with hydrogen bonds but and the influence of fibrin stabilizing factor and calcium ions they become dense and stiff so that is called fibrin mesh work but still gaps are present gaps are filled with other cells that includes the red blood cells white blood cells blood platelets and the total mesh is completely closed it is now called blood clot also called scab or thrombus right now half an hour 30 to half gradually after formation of this mesh still small gaps are still left behind 
So there is something called as clot retraction. In clot retraction process, you can see the fibrin mesh, the meshwork of threads coming closure, coming closure. So you can see them coming closure and even that minute gaps are also closed. So that is called clot retraction. This is initiated by again by blood platelets. Some of the proteins present inside the blood platelets, I mean actin, myosin, thrombosthenin. So certain proteins present inside blood platelets like actin, myosin, thrombosthenin. So inside the blood platelets you can see these proteins. That proteins will bring about blood that that will bring about clot retraction. After clot re retraction some 30 to 45 minutes after clot retraction you can see an yellow colored fluid is oozing out. A yellow colored fluid after the blood clot is totally formed after the after it's completely sealed you can see light yellow colored fluid which is coming out. So this is called as serum. So it is nothing but blood plasma but it is not having that blood proteins are containing very less of that blood proteins. It is called serum.